The new Teferi from Core 2021 is mind-blowing. I genuinely didn't expect them to make this. Greetings, owners of fine luxury cardboard rectangles. We are here today to talk about another Core 2021 spoiler. This time, the juicy new Mythic Rare Teferi. So let's not waste any time. We'll get them up on the screen right away here so we can talk about this insanity. There are multiple things about this card that genuinely surprised me. So what do we have? We have a three loyalty planeswalker for two blue and two. And I will admit that this information was leaked earlier, but the original loyalty that was given was uh, like a minus five. It was sort of a tentative version. So I guess somebody had access to a playtest version of Teferi or something like that because the abilities line up, the whole thing comes together, but it does have a different loyalty. So it's four mana for a three loyalty planeswalker. You may activate loyalty abilities of Teferi Master of Time on any player's turn, any time you could cast an instant. That is a really surprising ability to see on a planeswalker, right? Because that opens up the, like that's not basically you choose are you going to activate it on your turn or you choose to activate it on your opponent's turn it's both this is the first time we have ever seen this kind of an ability on a planeswalker and these sort of static abilities attached to planeswalkers tend to be fairly rare it's got a little bit of that enchantment vibe from War of the Spark with the ability, but either way, it really surprised me to see that this is something that you can use on each player's turn. So that, and that, that means like if you're playing multiplayer, that's gonna be around everybody, that's nutty. So the first ability is plus one, draw a card, then discard a card. Minus three, target creature you don't control phases out. Now this was a big surprise to me in all honesty. Them bringing back phasing was one of the things that made me go, mm, I don't I don't know, it doesn't sound too likely. But we did have that little teaser from Rosewater saying they were bringing back a non-evergreen keyword. Turns out it actually is phasing. I suppose it's really not that outlandish considering like uh, a year or so ago they did make the, the Teferi's protection or whatever that spell is that makes it so that all your permanents phase out. So they did actually bring phasing back. Phasing is such a weird ability, let's be real, man. You basically phase the permanent in and out every second turn, so if something has the phasing ability, then it goes away during your upkeep, but then the next, next upkeep it comes back. But it's not like going into exile, it's literally you treat the permanents like they don't exist. So they stay in their current state. And by that, I mean, normally, let's say with an exile or flicker style effect, when you exile a creature and it comes back to play, that creature is treated as if it's brand new, as if you had just cast it or it just magically appeared, right? So if it had plus one, plus one counters on it or enchantments on it or was equipped before it went into exile, when it returns, the enchantment, the equipment, they're all like, nah, bro, I don't know you, I don't remember you, I want nothing to do with you. So they don't come back with it, right? Versus phasing, where all counters, enchantments, equipment, everything like that stays. If a permanent phases, everything that's attached to it does like an indirect phase and phases out along with it. So there's no way to interact with phased out cards. There are, there are ways to exile tons of magic cards. There are tons of ways to exile magic cards. There are a few ways to mess with cards while they're in exile, but the phased out area, which doesn't really exist because the cards stay where they are, they stay in the same zone. They just don't exist. It's such a weird concept to wrap your head around. And that actually is part of the flavor of it, which is what we'll talk about once we get past the mechanical aspects of the card. So we've got... The ultimate, the one that you're building up to, which is minus 10 to take two extra turns after this one. Now that is a huge mountain to climb in terms of the loyalty. You know what I mean? Like that, that is a gigantic, gigantic amount of loyalty in terms of a planeswalker that has three loyalty to start with 
and can only gain you like on a plus one increment. That is a huge amount to have to get. So you look at it from that perspective and go, I don't know if we'll ever do the ultimate, but if you took this into a big old multiplayer game, like if you're playing, let's say, a four player game of Magic, in one wheel around the table, you could actually have this up to seven loyalty. So within two turns, you could rack up an extra two turns. And that seems like it's probably a reasonable amount of time for a, a game of four people for the other three players to find answers to this sort of thing. And in a two player game, yes, you are going to get to add two loyalty a turn overall. Not a turn, but I mean like a turn cycle where you have a turn and your opponent has a turn. So you're going to be able to get it up to five loyalty, but it's plus one to various plus one here isn't that strong. It may, when you look at it first and go, wow, I get to draw a card. But the thing is, you also have to discard a card. So it's not card advantage. It's more like card filtering. This isn't going to get you ahead in cards. So sometimes when new planeswalkers come out, people will judge it based on like, what kind of like, what kind of advantage can I get from this card advantage? You're not really gaining any card advantage. And also, Teferi's ability to protect him, himself is limited. Yes, he can phase out a creature you don't control, but phasing is a very temporary solution. So basically, I mean, you can put him out, plus one him on your turn, and yes, you'll be able to phase out their creature for one turn, but that drops Teferi down to one loyalty, and there's no way for you to get him set back up, really, in, in time. You know what I mean? Like, basically, it's gonna, it's gonna phase back the next turn, but you don't, you don't have enough time to build his loyalty high enough that you're going to be able to phase it out again. So you're only going to get to basically do it once. One phase out, and that's so temporary. You know what I mean? It's not even as good as bouncing the creature, because the creatures, it's like, it's imagine the Teferi from War of the Spark, and if he said bounce the creature, but then they get to cast it again for free the next turn, and it has haste. You know what I mean? Like, that's how it works. Because when a creature phases back in, it's ready to go. It doesn't have summoning sickness. It has every bonus that it had before. Like, it's just ready to roll. So that's not like super, super strong. It's nothing to sneeze at because again, you can activate these abilities at instant speed. That's pretty beefy. But overall, he feels like he's on the line where if you can get him out on a board where you already kind of have favor, like if you're playing a control style build and you can just kind of hide for a while, set yourself up like a shield wall or something like that where people can't get at you, then Teferi could become a real problem. You know what I mean? Now, in terms of the overall flavor of the card, oh my lord, this, is, this card is dripping with flavor. This is Teferi, the master of time. This artwork on the card is absolutely amazing. You've got Teferi with these like ripples of power, this kind of time magic cascading out in waves in front of him and behind him you can actually see the weather light and for somebody who loves old magic history and lore this is absolutely fantastic i love this artwork so very much and the concept just on the card in terms of being a master of time he can use his abilities on yours and your opponent's turn he can also do it at instant speed so right there, Teferi is completely warping the normal rules of time in multiple ways. So that sort of works in a way. The draw card, discard a card could be temporal manipulation to avoid kind of outcomes that he doesn't want to avoid, he doesn't want to have happen. The phasing is actually like full on time magic. If you don't know like about the phasing mechanic in magic's history, Teferi essentially engaged in a whole bunch of temporal manipulation just kind of messing around with time his experiments caused some big big problems and as a result teferi felt very guilty and that he had to like rectify the situation so he essentially crafted magics to undo everything he had done basically restore balance and stop with all the the problems that but when you mess with time magic you run into big problems and we'll actually see that with the lore series that I'm doing right now. I'm doing a series on Urza, Joyra, and all these other characters, and they, there's a big factor of time magic that actually will involve Teferi as well, where it really, really causes massive problems. But either way, Teferi has this situation where he's devised magic that is going to undo all the temporal damage that he has done. 
So he casts this mega magic. And what happens? Oh, clearly he didn't plan it out properly because the entire island that he lived on winked out of existence. Teferi, Teferi and all like all of his people basically, they all got phased out of real time. So they don't exist in the real world anymore. They were gone for hundreds and hundreds of years. Actually, if you watch the Mangara spoiler video that it did yesterday, it ties into this. Mangara was actually drawn to Jamura because of the ripples that happened throughout the entire plane when Teferi blinked his whole island out of existence. For 200 years, he was out of phase with Dominaria. How insane is that? And if you guys want to chuckle, if you want to know how like Garbo the ability of phasing was back in the days of magic, like now, the, like the days of magic are over. Back in the original days of magic is what I meant to say. Take a look at the Telerian Drake. This is three mana for a 2-4 flyer with phasing. So you only get it every second turn. Design at this point of the game felt that having a 2-4 flyer for three mana was too strong, so you should only have it every second turn. That's how they pushed the concept, where they're like, okay, you know what? We, we, we understand you'll get the permanent every second turn, so we'll make it beefier. But it's just a 2-4 drink. Isn't that awful? Absolutely awful. Anyways, the final ability, the ultimate ability that he has to take two extra turns, clearly ties into the time magic concept very strongly as well. There is, in fact, a magic card called Time Stretch, and that is a, a massively expensive spell that allows you to take two extra turns. So if you take, a, and I mean the artwork on that card is so cool too, right? Take a look at it, you've got, you've got this army of cephalids and in front of it, you have this individual who basically in the moment of like one footstep, right? It's basically looks to me like one, one big footstep forwards was enough to take them from a, not exactly like young man, but in comparison, a much younger version of themselves They've rapidly aged in that time frame. It's just this crazy stretched out moment. And the moment stretched so long that in that moment, this dude has aged into being a senior. But look at those, look at those beefcake arms, man. Apparently, apparently, I'll tell you what, when it comes to looking at time travel, gains a clock is still a thing. And the flavor text on this card says there's lots of time like the present, which I really enjoy. Overall, this Teferi, like, it blew me away on multiple levels. The phasing coming back, the activating abilities on both players' turns. Now, I'm fully going to say that Teferi's a mythic, and I didn't recognize how dumb Oko was going to be when he got spoiled. So, on the surface to me, I think Teferi's probably fine, but I also thought Oko was fine. So, just bear that in mind. I am not a meta guru. I am a flavor and lore lover, and if you love that kind of stuff, you're gonna to wanna to go ahead and subscribe, hit the like button, do the commenting so YouTube falls in love with this video and shows it to everybody. We get more friends showing up. And if you really love what I'm doing, this channel is community supported. So jump on the Patreon, give me that aid, and I will see you all very soon.